For reasons that escape me a little bit, you're still watching these DaVinci Resolve project settings videos. Well done you! Now for capture and playback, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this is very specific to VTR workflows. So if you're going to be capturing from magnetic tape like VHS or Betacam, you can specify things like your HD resolutions and frame rates. You can specify your video data levels and bit depths. I'm going to leave these settings as they are. And if in future I do output a project to tape, I'll make sure to make a new tutorial covering the process. In this section, we customize the functionality of the DaVinci Resolve control panel. The majority of the settings, as you can see, refer to the sensitivity of the dials. Here you can also switch between the layout of the additive color wheel, and beneath that you can control the LCD and backlighting on the keys. For the most part, these settings affect third-party control panels too. Next are the settings for the autosave panel, for which I made a dedicated tutorial a few videos back. I suggest you check it out as it lists these settings in detail, uh, but all you need to know is that you probably want to turn on to backup project, which you can then access by clicking on the list backups button. Keyboard remapping is great for increasing the speed and efficiency of your work through the use of shortcuts. You can click on the little arrows to expand the full list of functions and their respective shortcuts. At the top, you can see that you can map your keyboard to a variety of existing software defaults. This is really convenient if you're really used to working in, say, Premiere Pro or Final Cut or Avid Media Composer, and with a click of a button, you can switch to workflows you're more familiar with. To introduce a new shortcut or to change an existing shortcut, double-click in the shortcut column, and when you see this gray bar with an X next to it, you can type on your keyboard the new shortcut that you want to apply to this function. When you click off, it will now be applied. If any previous functions were using the same shortcut, they will lose those keys. But what you might notice is that I've now gained these reset arrows next to the shortcut column. That means that I've made changes that no longer reflect the DaVinci Resolve keyboard. I can click on the reset arrow to go back to the original shortcut I was using. If you do make substantial changes, you can then click on New to create a new keyboard preset and give it your own name. It will then be available to you from the list of keyboard maps at the top. If you're about to go to a different workstation but you want to keep working with your own keyboard settings, you can click on the Export button which will save the keyboard shortcut files as a text file. You can then either put it on a USB stick or email it to yourself. And when you switch over to the new computer, you can click on the word import and find that text file in the new workstation. This will then load your previous keyboard and you can continue working with what you're comfortable with. To delete a keyboard, simply select it in the list at the top and click on the word delete. The last settings we're looking at is metadata. These reflect the metadata panel available in the media page. By default, these are empty, but you can choose to make a new preset and specify which metadata is the most important for you to see when you're organizing or conforming your footage. The metadata is sort of like invisible information that's hidden within the container of your file. You normally see it when you select a file or within the file's properties. So in this case, I'm looking at the metadata of some video clips I made earlier. With DaVinci Resolve, you have some extended metadata controls, which we'll be looking at a bit later. And that's it for the project settings. I hope you found that useful, and thank you very much for watching.